responding Delta for a 57-year-old male. He's having some chest pain, difficulty breathing. He does have a COPD history. A cardiac with a little bit of respiratory or respiratory with a little bit of cardiac? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Anytime we get called for a patient with chest pain or shortness of breath, we want to get there in a hurry. He's short of breath, he's got chest pain. I'm thinking he's going to be sick. You know, time is of the essence. Hey, this is Darren, he's 57, he's got eight out of ten chest pain. It's okay. He's got eight years of miss. The firefighters have put the patient on oxygen until we could get there to give him medication. Point to me where your chest pain is on your chest. On the left side there. You're short of breath as well? Okay. I'm going to take a listen to your lungs again and just see. Take some breaths for me while I listen. He's 88. In a normal patient, we want to see oxygen saturations of 95 to 100 percent. This patient was 88 percent on oxygen. He's not moving a lot of air. He's silent in the bases. I don't hear a lot of movement. And then he's got an expiratory wheeze on the upper, I heard. We're going to give you a nebulizer, OK? We're just getting it set up. We need to give this patient a nebulizer of Ventolin and Atrovent to open up his airway. Do you have any other medical conditions other than the COPD? I lost a lot of weight in the How come? I don't know. Okay. Have you been throwing up? Yes. Yeah? yeah. OK. It's coming. It's going into you right now. Focus on your breathing for us. I couldn't imagine feeling the way this patient feels. You're starving for oxygen, but you can't get any. What no. we're going to do is we're going to stand you up, and we're going to put a seat underneath your bum. You know, this guy actually can't catch his breath. So the anxiety comes with it because he's like, you're panicking. Maybe more of a COPD exacerbation than a chest pain, but. Picture if you were drowning. You know, like the first thing you do is like, you panic and you try to get to the surface. And then you end up using more oxygen. I can't breathe though. There's a sense of fear within him. It's compounding our situation. I don't want that one. We have another mask coming okay. here for you. Listen to me. Okay, we're gonna try this mask. He's not responding to the nebulizer, so we need to try something else. It's a big mask that goes on your face. CPAP provides continuous positive pressure within the airways, which helps keep the lungs open and alleviate shortness of breath. We're gonna put this mask on your face, and it's got a very high level of oxygen, and it pushes it in your lungs, okay? Big breaths. Yeah, yeah. Patients are usually quite fearful of the CPAP mask. You're already short of breath, plus the feeling of claustrophobia. You don't want that big mask on your face. Does it feel better? Yeah? I guess you can't breathe. That's a reason to be anxious. We're definitely seeing an improvement in our patient. Our treatment is helping him. His anxiety is decreasing. So let's see. We got How is your chest pain now? That you've relaxed a little. So our SATs are 99. His work of breathing is decreasing and becoming much easier. That mask is really helping, hey? Yeah, good. I'm glad we tried it. When you see this patient take a sigh of relief, you can take a sigh of relief. You know, you finally found a treatment plan that has helped this patient.